Today we're talking about ergonomics and how programming can sometimes hurt us. Welcome back everybody, happy 2024. I hope you had a great holiday break if you had a holiday break or if you celebrate holidays or whatever you do. Just like with love, programming shouldn't hurt, but sometimes it does and so today in this video I wanted to talk about some of the things that you might not be aware of, things that you really should be aware of and be keeping in mind as you start your journey as a programmer or really anyone who spends a lot of time at a computer. I know we have a lot of new programmers or computing professionals who are watching this channel and hopefully this video can help you avoid future pain, so suffering, frustration, and medical bills. So in this video, we're gonna talk about a few tips for improving your ergonomics and avoiding injuries while programming. We're also gonna talk about why I mouse left-handed, even though I am right-handed. We're gonna talk about my funky keyboard and some new monitors that I'm trying out. Now, quick disclaimer, I am not a medical doctor. I am not an ergonomics expert. This video should not be taken as expert medical advice. It's just my experience as I recover from shoulder surgery. Please double check all of this before you make decisions that have to do with your own health please double check with people who know what they're talking about, better sources than me. Also in this video, I'm going to be mentioning a few products that I'm using. The monitors were sent to me as a gift from BenQ. Thanks guys, they're great, I really like them. Everything else mentioned is purely just what I use. It, there's no sponsorship or, or anything like that going on. No affiliation, just what helps me avoid going to the doctors. Also a big thanks to all of you who support the channel on Patreon. Thank you so much for helping this channel work, for making it possible and making it make sense. But now let's talk about ergonomics, and I thought we'd start with a story. So back when I was in my mid-20s, I was a graduate student, a tech enthusiast. I was working on improving my research and teaching skills, learning more about low-level systems, embedded systems. I spent an awful lot of time on the computer. I knew nothing about ergonomics, and like many people in their 20s, I felt like I was invincible. I mean, we are, right? Then one day I started having shooting pain going down my back on the, on the right side, and I was like, what's going on? I finally after consulting a doctor realized that the problem was how I was using a computer, specifically that my keyboard and mouse were too high. And having things set too high basically was putting a lot of stress on my shoulder and then I was doing that for like 40, 50, 60 hours a week and finally at one point my shoulder had had enough. So ever since then it's like the last 20 years, I have had shoulder issues, mostly manageable through physical therapy and better ergonomics until recently where I had to get some stuff surgically repaired. Hopefully I am on my way to a future with far less pain in it. But I learned a few things along the way and in this video I just want to pass them along. So my first tip, and this may be a little bit obvious, is that prevention is better than cure. Now this may seem obvious, but being careful and thinking about this today before it starts hurting you, before you have to go to a doctor and find out why is my shoulder or my wrist or my hand hurting can save you a lot of pain and suffering and money and time. I have been able to find ways to manage these issues, but I have seen these issues be life-changing and career-ending for some people. So please do take this seriously. So tip two is let's take a look at where your stuff, your workstation, how are things positioned? So this has been a big one for me. This is where it all started. Specifically, I want my keyboard to be low enough for my arms to be down at a nice neutral roughly 90 degree angle by my side. This is a nice neutral position for my shoulders. I want my monitor to be high enough so my head and neck are in a nice neutral position. This can of course be a real problem for laptop users because your keyboard and your monitor are together so they're all scrunched down and if they're on your lap you're going to be looking down all the time which is not great for your neck or upper spine. If the laptop is on a table or desk then the keyboard and trackpad are probably going to be too high and did I mention that's not very good? for your shoulders. Having your hands really close together on a little keyboard also can cause issues. That encourages internal shoulder rotation and some people develop wrist and hand issues. I personally haven't had any issues like carpal tunnel syndrome, but I know people who have and that gets really serious too. And of course, we love our laptops. We want to take our work with us wherever we go. But my recommendation is that whenever you can use an external keyboard and make sure it's at the right height. In my case, I use an adjustable keyboard tray. 
That allows me to adjust where it, where it is, where it needs to be. Also, as you can see here, I use a split keyboard, which might be overkill for some people, but keeping my hands vertical allows my shoulders to not constantly be internally rotated. For me, that means more comfort and less pain. There are a few different variants on this idea you'll see out there if you go looking for ergonomic keyboards. I like this one because I can adjust the angle and I like that the two sides are spread out a bit and that all this is adjustable. So I really like that. Naturally, it does come with a little bit of a learning curve because you can't see your fingers, but for me, that wasn't too bad. It maybe took me a week to get the hang of it. Also, as a bit of a bonus, this can be an interesting conversation piece. Everybody wants to know what's up with your funky keyboard. Also, I personally prefer trackpads to mice because this allows you to change up your hand position, your wrist angle. It just allows more flexibility in how you use it. A doctor probably could be more specific about the anatomical reasons for this, but for me, I just find that gripping a mouse, having my hand in like that gripping position causes more stress and more problems than it does if I can keep my hand open and more relaxed, which is easier to do when I'm using a trackpad. Now, due to my personal injury, I have moused left-handed for a long time or trackpadded left-handed. But the other nice thing about a trackpad is it's much easier to just switch from one hand to the other. And so if you want to give one hand or another a break, just go ahead and switch it and you can just use the trackpad on your other side. Naturally, you can do that with a mouse, but it's a little more awkward and you usually have to go in and change your system settings so that you can, if you want to flip which mouse button is which. Also, while we're setting up our workstation, I recommend having an external monitor. As I mentioned before, thanks to BenQ for sending me these two monitors that I am using in this video. So far, they look great. The picture is really nice and I've really enjoyed them. So thanks. I will put model information down in the description of the video in case any of you want to check them out. These monitors are designed to reduce eye strain and I haven't used them long enough to really know if that's going to make a difference for me, but I am glad they're looking into improving that part of my workflow. I haven't had eye issues yet. Yet, thank goodness. But I do spend a lot of time looking at screens, so that seems like a good thing. And this brings me to tip number three, and that is if you possibly can, use multiple monitors and use bigger monitors if you have them available. Now, some people take this to an unhealthy extreme. I am not suggesting that you try to be like one of those movie programmers who don't really exist, I don't think. Uh, you know, but have like four or five big 50 inch monitors. That's not what I'm suggesting at all. I also recognize that there are space concerns and cost concerns involved here. So Someone who is working for a company doing this professionally may have different resources available. I totally get that. Do what you can afford. But the great thing about having more screen real estate is it allows you to have everything that you are working on in one place at a time. So on one monitor, I can, for example, have my text editor, my terminal window, your IDE if you are so inclined. And I usually on a secondary monitor usually like to keep up my documentation. So man pages or the web documentation for whatever API I'm using. Having a really nice monitor off to my right I usually put it in the vertical position, but that allows me to have the documentation just up there in front of me. So this speeds things up and requires less typing and mousing, which of course means less stress on our hands, our wrists, and our shoulders. Related is tip number four, which is a way to further reduce the amount of typing that we're doing, and that is learn the hotkeys. So every application you're going to use, every program you're using probably has some hotkeys. Some of them have a ton of hotkeys. There's no way you're going to learn all of them. But if you learn the most common ones, if you do something over and over again, you're going to find that keyboard shortcuts typically save you a lot of mousing. Hitting command tab, for example, to switch applications is so much faster and easier on my shoulder than clicking around and trying to find the application I want with my mouse. And even if you don't care about the health of your hands, arms, and shoulders, did I mention that it's going to make you a lot faster? It makes you way more productive. So tip number five is to move. So in conversations with my doctors, one of the things that they've recommended is to make sure, even with good posture, even with good ergonomics, make sure I'm not sitting in the same position all day long or for long periods of time. So changing up your position, moving, our bodies are designed to move. So one thing that helps me is I do use a standing desk. That helps. I also find that it is helpful to set a timer for myself that reminds me to move, to stand up, to walk around, go down the hall to get a drink, to you know switch from sitting to standing or standing to sitting. The timer also helps me to think about my posture and just just adjust. And the idea of paying attention to my posture brings me to tip number six, which is to breathe. One thing I have learned about myself is that when I'm programming or really doing anything that requires a lot of concentration, I tend to hold my breath. It's not something I think about, it's just subconsciously I tend to focus and I don't breathe very well. And so if I combine that with bad posture, I'm basically stressing my body and then also simultaneously depriving it of oxygen, which is a really bad combination. So I fully don't understand how this all works, but setting a timer to remind 
remind myself to breathe, to you know, to think about my breathing, to breathe deeply, to pay attention to how I'm sitting, relax, loosen up, whatever, really makes a big difference. Over the years, I've also included breathing exercises, other mindfulness practices, meditation, yoga, things like that, all of which have made a big difference, and I highly recommend them. Your mileage may vary, but for me, mindfulness has been a huge help. So that is six tips. There's so much more we could talk about. Please drop down in the comments whatever you think I left out, maybe do a second video, or maybe people reading the comments will learn something that they didn't get from the video. So yeah, please do drop that comment down there. Like, subscribe if you enjoyed this or if you want to help get the channel out there, uh, help advertise, tell a friend. Whatever you do, click something on the way out. And I hope this video serves as the start to a happier, healthier 2024. Again, Happy New Year, and I'll see you soon. Bye. And I hope this video serves as the start to a happier, healthier 2024. Again, Happy New Year, and I'll see you soon. Bye.